Thank you for joining us tonight in the Gold Spike. It's a very lively venue. Don't forget, if you want to catch us next week, we are back at the Scullery, which is on the corner of Ogden and Sixth. So you might have noticed that some of our staff members and volunteers are walking around with some pretty spiffy downtown podcast t-shirts. If you would like to buy one, we actually have some available for sale off to the side tonight, so make sure you catch one. And uh, we want to see you wearing it at the scullery next week at the next episode. Thank you again for joining us. I'm here with Chandler. And Chandler, you're from Lucy and Health, right? So I am. Tell me a bit about what Lucy and Health is. So Lucy and Health Sciences is a direct-to-patient online medication and vaccine adverse events research company. We do data informatics and health media. We have a couple sites in addition to Lucy and Health Sciences. We have hormonesmatter.com, which is our primary health media site, as you suggested, it is uh, women's health oriented. And then we just launched a new site called Heal with Friends, which is a social online health site as well. This is a lot of amazing things. And on top of that, you're also helping to organize an event too coming up, which is the SciTech hookup. And that, this sounds amazing, like this sounds like some kind of um, amazing science meets technology. So why don't you tell me more about what this event entails? So the SciTech hookup is the third annual, this is our third year running, um, is a combination of advanced science and technology companies that are bred and born and bred in Nevada, mostly in southern Nevada, though we do have a couple of northern Nevada uh, transplants that come down here. We highlight uh, science and technology companies uh, to the broader community, to investors in uh, regional areas, uh, southwest mainly. Um, and we have a dinner and, and speaker series with a panel that allows us to uh, really foster the development of science and technology here in the, the region. This sounds really cool. Like it almost seems like it's a C CES for local like sci-fi. <laughs> it is. It is. So all of your medical diagnostics, your environmental technologies. Um, we have drone companies, telemetry companies, hardware companies. Um, everything that you can think of, we have at this, this show. I really want to see the drones. They sound really cool. And they are really cool. <laughs> and what's really neat about it, it's a UNLV student who has the drone company. It's Aero Skyworks, Greg Priesma and his crew, um, who have won a number of awards for their drone technology. Um, and so it's a, it's a homegrown company. So what's your role in this uh, event that's being put on? So I, I chair the event along with a group of other volunteers. The entire organization is run by volunteers, mostly entrepreneurs in the science and technology fields themselves. Uh, we have a 501c3 uh, called Parallel Innovation Labs, or PI Labs for short. Uh, and the goal is to, to really foster the development of science and technology in this region. This is fantastic. So if people want to buy a ticket um, and show up, what are the details that they need? So the event is next Thursday night, October 30th. Uh, the technology showcase is from 4 to 6 in the evening. The dinner is 6.30 to 9, speakers. Um, it does cost uh, $50 to get into the technology showcase. We've already completed the sales for the dinner, so that's not available. But if you'd like to come, the tickets can be found online at SciTechLookup.org. Nice and easy. So um, it's going to be at this really cool venue downtown called Meet, right? Correct. It is Meet, right? It's around the corner here. Yeah, and it's a really cool building, very modern It is very neat, very yeah, technologically nice. advanced, yes. <laughs> Sounds like the perfect venue indeed. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Outside In um, is a story, it's a modern search for identity and responsibility, sh showing through the eyes of the lead character how sometimes we have to become the opposite to know who we truly are. 
That is actually a really big statement, too, and you had a, a wonderful reaction to this book, too. In fact, I think I see a little bit of an award on the front cover. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to win the International Book Award for Literary Fiction for 2014, so that was good news. Um, and it's really, it's, it's an old story that I'm trying to put a new spin on. So it's, it's a character that's 28 years old and he loses uh, his job and in that he loses his identity. And he goes kind of on a search and the things that he finds, the sex, alcohol, drugs, he becomes lost even more. So it's a story of him kind of losing himself and coming back around to know what's really important in his life. Fabulous, and congratulations on winning your award. That's fantastic. And so you you actually came to Vegas after this, and you've been here for two years. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is you're writing a new book, right? So yes. tell me about what brings you here. Yes. Yeah, so the the new book is called The Investment Club, and it's it's based right here in downtown Las Vegas, and it's about five broken people who meet at a blackjack table over at the El Cortez Casino and they discover the greatest return you get in life is what you contribute to one another. So I'm doing a lot with this idea of gambling and debt, both on a personal and a financial aspect. So really kind of digging into their lives, what brought them here, how they met, and then how they influenced themselves, each other, after, after that meeting. I think this is a really, um, a really important issue to explore, and I think that this is very centric to what Vegas is, but it also offers like a different view of, of how people can benefit each other and grow as a result, right? A absolutely, and, and the timing I think is perfect. Uh, when I came to do kind of my initial research and I caught all the downtown stuff that was happening, I just really reinforced that it's the right time for the story to be told. And very little action is going to happen on the Strip. I'm really keeping it all downtown with people that are living here, that have transplanted here, but are living here now. So it's more about their lives than it is, you know, the typical story I think that's told here. Thank you so much for supporting downtown and, and concentrating on that rather than the Strip. And speaking of research, what kind of things did you do in order to help you write this book? Like, did you research in the casinos? Yeah, I could say I spent a lot of time playing blackjack. <laughs> uh, playing blackjack, and one of the characters, one of the five characters is a stripper. So I had to make my rounds of the different clubs and get the authentic research as well there. So It's going to be authentic, that's the most important thing, right? <laughs> exactly. It's the details that, that make the writing. <laughs> Fantastic, okay. So, um, if people want to um, find out more about this, like, when do you think you're going to have the book finished? Yeah, all my, all my writing, um, if you want more information, um, you can go to bycooper.com, B-Y-C-O-O-P-E-R.com, and all the information on my writing books, where they can be found. Any bookstore will have it or can order it. Um, the new book, I'm hoping to be finished early 2015, and hopefully it'll be out late 2015, early 2016. Okay, so now that we've got those details out of the way, I'm going to ask you some of those pressing writer's questions. Okay. So, what's your best tip for being able to get through writer's block? Yeah, writer's block, I've found, comes usually when you have too many ideas going on and you can't, you can't pick one and your mind's just going everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I just try to slow everything down. And really, it's like anything else. You just have to grind through stuff. There's a lot of days that you don't want to be there staring at the screen, there's other things to do, and you just gotta have some discipline and grind through, and a lot of this stuff isn't any good, but the only way you're gonna get through those lulls is just to, to grind and grind and grind. <laughs> Very sage advice. And so my last question is, I feel like this is a thing, do you ever wake up at 3 a.m. and you just got this idea and you have to jump up and turn the light on and start writing it down? Yeah, absolutely, that's why it's nice to have a, a journal by the by the side of the bed, you write it down. Most of it never makes sense, <laughs> but every so often you get a nice little kernel that you can build on the next day. I like the sound of that. Well, I'm very inspired by your story, and thanks again for coming out to downtown Las Vegas um, to write the book, but also coming on the show to tell us all about it. I'm very excited about uh, the Investment Club being released next year, and uh, thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you so thanks, much. Doug.
Oh, man. Donovan, can I get my backup drink? Showing me up now. No, I did. I, okay, I'm not showing you up. I'm just like thinking we're at a bar. We're at the Gold Spike, which is one of the coolest places downtown. So who comes here to drink on the weekends? Anybody? Let's do it. Right. Okay, little known fact, I live here. So this is my living room. It's a pleasure to have you all in the living room. Um, and I'm joined by Glenn Scott, which is amazing. So you are an executive creative director at Brain Trust. I am. And you have many other titles in the uh, FFA. Give me a thing again. Hey, yeah. Uh, American yeah, yeah, yeah. Advertising Federation here, local, right. local chapter here. Yep. Okay, so first off, uh, have you been drinking all night? Uh, I'm a couple whiskeys in, so, so far so good. Uh, yeah. Are you familiar with the event that we're having here? Like, do you know about grills and guitars? Do you know why all these people are standing oh, absolutely. around? Oh, absolutely. No, I, I, uh, absolutely. There we go. Oh. Oh, we don't do cups? No, you gotta go straight out of the pitcher there. Right, there. There you do it. You, you, you give me a countdown. Give me the old frat song or something. Three, two, one. Oh man, I gave you a little extra. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like that's, it. That's, I'm not as drunk as it looks. It, that, that, was, that was playing it up for the camera. Yeah, no, I got you. No, this is awesome. I mean, being out in, you know, life is okay. beautiful. Girls and guitars. I mean, we've got the founder of Life is Beautiful back here. We got Tony Shea. We got oh, yeah. Ray Hans, you, yeah, you got Hubert Keller walking around, and I'm the asshole with the mic. So no, you should sure. be talking to these people, not me. Okay. Well, anyways, we got a lot of entrepreneurs. Downtown Las Vegas has a lot of these small entrepreneurs. Absolutely. You are an amazing creative director. Talk to them about the things they can learn from the experiences you've been through. How can they succeed in their businesses? Uh, are you, you going to eat that while I... Oh, do you want half? Time? Oh, I'm you not, want half? I'll, I'll, we can Lady yeah. in the Tramp it? You, no, no, no. Look at that. Look at Lady in the Tramp it. You, you talk. All right. Um, I'll beat it. No, I mean, so Las Vegas is a small community. And, and so no matter what... Oh, or, thank you. And, and no matter what industry you're in, I think as long as you're able to you know, put yourself out there in that industry, you're going to be able to make some connections that are going to be meaningful. Um, I think one of the, the reasons that I, I, I've been able to have some success is is that I'm just constantly trying to nurture those relationships, whether that's with you know with the downtown podcast, whether that's with uh, the American Advertising Federation, with that's nonprofits. Um, there's always going to be an opportunity to to make those connections, and and people that you might talk to now, they might be clients later, they might be employees later, uh, they might be employers later, um, and you know it, it's it's just all about the people you meet. Okay. So talk to me about what you're doing with the AAF. Like, why are you concerned about bringing this? everybody. Yeah, so a, a big passion of mine is just elevating the, the advertising industry here in Las Vegas. We have some really good agencies, some really good creative that comes out of this town. Um, a lot of people are, are just only familiar with what happens or stays here, um, which is great. And that really has, has helped uh, kind of raise some national awareness for what we do here in Las Vegas. And, and I was fortunate to work on that for a little while, but there's so much, so many other businesses and so many other agencies here in town doing good work. Um, it's just one more one more industry that Las Vegas can be known for. So with the American Advertising Federation, we're just trying to help make those connections with the different people at the different agencies instead of just being siloed amongst their own their own companies. Uh, and, and so we have events uh, all the time. I had one last night uh, over at Container Park. Uh, we've got one next week at uh, at Art Square Theater. We're having a we have a cocktail lecture series called Speak and Speak Easy. Um, we're featuring di digital media trends, so we've got uh, the digital publisher from Greenspun Media Group. We've got uh, a rep from Pandora that will be there. We've got um, Very cool. yeah, we've got uh, the corporate media director from R and R Partners, all talking about upcoming digital media trends, how to avoid pitfalls since sure. everything's kind of new. Yeah, how we to can tell them all the about that. We got yeah. plenty of pitfalls to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. learning from people that are able to day-to-day uh, -day basis are trying to make sure that they're doing the right thing for their businesses is important. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, that's it is, really awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, Art Square okay. Theater next Thursday. Okay. Um, so you've come to the Gold Spike before. Absolutely. This, this is not your first time. It's not my first this is, time. This is not your first rodeo. Not my first rodeo, not my first whiskey <laughs> here. That's for sure. Okay, so you... Oh, uh, okay, that wasn't a question until just a minute ago, but you put you put your love of whiskey on your LinkedIn profile. I do. I love whiskey. Um, if there's something... Anybody a whiskey fan? There you that's, go. That's the cowgirls. It's it's a, it's, <laughs> as cowboys, we recognize them. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it's a thing that we do. I mean, if you're passionate about something, whether that's whiskey or food or whatever, put it, I mean, why, why would I hold that back from even my business profile? You know, I think it's important. So, you, oh, feel, you feeling okay? Yeah, sorry for the burp. That just, <laughs> it's not, it's I drink from the pitcher. It was yeah, yeah, intense, I know. Yeah. I'm a little jealous. Okay, um, so what's the, so you're a passionate guy. What's the most thing, what's something you're the most passionate about? 
what are you most passionate about? Like, how do you want to change the world? What's your legacy that you want to live? Yeah, no, I mean, for me, it's all about Las Vegas. Uh, I'm not originally from here. I'm from Chicago, just like a lot of people are not from here. But, um, but who lives in Las Vegas? Woo! Yeah. That's, that was an easy, that's like, an easy term up. Well, like real, real, though. He's yeah, been here a long time. Yeah. Real, real live people from Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, no, it's, uh, you know, I think it's all looking about what we have here to offer, like, I mean, just from the advertising industry. There are great, there's great agencies and there's great work coming out of here. And, and if we can make ourselves known as a community, it elevates the conversation about what Las Vegas is known for outside of just tourism. I mean, tourism is great. True. It's the lifeblood. Um, but there's so much more that we can offer and build off of. So right. lots of communities, let's help elevate all of them. Yeah, so can you talk about any stories where in the past having a relationship, especially outside of work, actually benefited you getting to the place where you are right now? Yeah, there's, uh, well, there's so many. Um, you know, part, part of my role is to help bring in new business for our, our agency. And there's so many times when I'll meet somebody at, a, at an event like this or at a, at a party or at a nonprofit event or, or, or you'll be participating with them, volunteering, that all of a sudden they become clients or they become employees. There's a, uh, a great story that I have is um, we have an event, a monthly event for the American Advertising Federation called Brand Beers, and it kind of moves around the valley. We had it at Downtown Container Park last uh, last night. Evelyn was there. Yeah, hey, that's fun. good. Um, Evelyn in the house. Yeah. And we and we just started that about three years ago. And one of the first events, I, I met this girl that was working at another agency. And about three or four months later, because of that connection, she ended up becoming an employee of mine. Um, and I never would have met her, never would have known her outside of outside of being at one of those events and just trying to go around and, and meet all of the different people, whether they're people that are you know peers on some level or people that look you know that they just came straight out of school. There's anybody's going to have have something to offer. Right. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyways, if anybody wants to get in contact with you, leave them with you, have your Twitter account, are you reaching out to people, you seem like a community guy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Twitter, at the Glendon, I'm sure you're probably going to put that up somewhere like right around here. Oh, yeah, yeah, screen, yeah. Right? Poor editor, poor Jonathan. Yeah, He's right like, here, put it right here. Here. <laughs> But he will. Twitter he, handle, he that's probably the easiest way to reach me. He can yeah. do anything, whether yeah. he wants to or not. Or, you really know, I'm downtown all the time, with, uh, whether it's uh, El Cortez or Ma Museum or Smith Center, those are clients of ours, and we, so we're down here, we're trying to, uh, yeah. trying to wear his waist. You, you do work with a lot of the big brands downtown. We do, so yeah. Um, very yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You guys think you learned a lot from Glenn? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Cheers. it. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. you coming out. It was good. <laughs>
end of the uh, publication here, there's a calendar of events. Uh, for example, this one is October. It talks about all the events that are going on downtown. So any of your friends that are out, uh, these can be found anywhere downtown, um, at the beat, at the container park, and you can also find them all around uh, Henderson and Summerlin as well. So have your friends check it out and, uh, and read up on the reviews of places to eat and, and go check them out too. And uh, if you ever do go eat at one of the places that you talk about in here, tweet us to let us know what you think about it, you know, and see if it's uh, on par with what they talk about here. Um, other than that, go ahead and check them out on DTZen.com, or you can follow them on Facebook. Uh, we also have their hashtag, they have this hashtag DTZen on Instagram as well. All right, you guys have a great evening. Hashtag.